Always assumed Deb's prime growing years were 91 to 95. Well, that was, I was like 7 to 11 during those years. So, I mean, yeah, in there somewhere. Um, my teenage years were more turn of the century, you know, which means that I was, uh, you know, I was a junk kid. <laughs> I, was, I was one of those like Limp biscuit, Kid Rock, mixed with like Dave Matthews. I was one I was I was that kid. Um <laughs> my favorite bands growing up were like Dave Matthews and the Bare Naked Ladies. I had all of their albums. They were huge in Canada before they came to America. So they had like two albums in Canada before they came here. Um and they're actually really good albums. Gordon, their first album is incredible. Uh they also have a live album, Rock Spectacle, that is one of the best live albums I've ever heard, which is saying something. Um, just production on it's really good. Set list is good. Improvisation is good. But anyway, um, but nowadays I have very different musical tastes. Like I look back on my musical taste, I kind of cringe, honestly. Like I actually, I actually liked, unironically liked Limp Biscuit back in the day and would defend them and stuff. I just said this on Twitter the other day, but I honestly, my, Brittany and I were talking about it a couple of weeks ago. And I think hybrid theory, like you could make the argument. I don't know if I want to make the argument, but I think I think you could make the argument Hybrid Theory is the best alternative rock album of all time. But of course, alternative rock is a very large category of a lot of different albums, you know. Like, do you put The Smiths in that category? You know, there's a lot of bands like, do you put this or that band in that category? you put Red Hot Chili Peppers in alt-rock? I think you do, right? So, And Blood Sugar Sex Magic, another one of the better albums of all time, if you want to count that as an alt-rock album. so. But I think, I think that Hybrid Theory, you could definitely make the point, is like, Top three, if not the best. It's real. It's just the whole album is really good. Where are you from? Shmer realize I am from the great state of Georgia. Sometimes not so great. <laughs> Seriously, Rock Spectacle is one of my all-time favorites. Ah, oh, Big Green Yeti. Nice. We share. Yeah, we share that. Good boy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> another another good alt rock album that I'm not sure is really alt rock is a uh, Gorillaz self titled release. Um, I could have sworn that album was called 192000, but it just has 192000 on it. It's a self-titled release. But again, is that alt rock? Or is it some kind of indie zombie funk hip hop thing? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I can listen to that entire album too without skipping any tracks. Dookie is, oh, Optimator. Dookie is a very good entry. Dookie is the best Green Day album by a lot, by like a whole lot, a whole lot. <laughs> Offspring. Offspring did have a couple of good albums, but I don't know if there's an Offspring album that I think is like the best. But Offspring is really good. Like Offspring is Offspring has several songs that are fantastic. Um, but I don't know. Maybe um, what is it? Americana. Probably their best album, or the one before Americana. Both both really good albums. Reanimation was the best. Burden Sound. I really like Reanimation. Uh, the the second Linkin Park album. Uh, just a remix of, of Hybrid Theory, basically, like a, an industrial album that was basically a remix of their first album. I really, really liked that album, like a lot. Uh, and not there were some originals, too, like High Voltage was on that album. And High Voltage is maybe Mike Shinoda's, like, best work as a rapper recorded for a Linkin Park album. So, yeah, kind of trip hop. Yeah, if you're looking at Gorillaz, yeah, kind of. Insomniac, best Green Day album, Fight Me. That's tough, man. Because I like uh, Dookie, and I like Nimrod, too. I think Nimrod is a fantastic album. 100. Dookie went triple diamond for a reason. Optimator gives 100 bits to say that. Yeah, Dookie was not only, not only you know, a listenable album, like every track is listenable, but just, like, reshaped the industry. Like, we, because we got Dookie in, like, 1996, we got the entire, like, pop-punk era. In the early 2000s. So, you know, if you like Blink-182 or whatever, you probably have Green Day to thank for that. So, a lot of people uh, supporting Americana. I think Americana does have some songs that don't hold up now, right? Like, I think that Get a Job is a cringy song. Um, Pretty Fly for a White Guy is kind of a cringy song too, right? But, like, there were, there were some really good songs on Americana. There were some really good songs. Insomniac's masterpiece, Love Nimrod 2. Was it 94? Dookie was 94? Jeez. I thought it was 95 or 6. But wow, 94. It's crazy. About Third Wave Sky, like the California Punk Sky Hybrid. I think we have um, no doubt to thank for that partially. Um, 
in a lot of ways, Fizzinator. No doubt did not end up being the same band they started out as. But in terms of bringing the ska sound to the mainstream, I think that No Doubt was maybe the biggest act to do it in the 90s. So, But anyway, God, the 90s. That man, mindless self-indulgence, best band ever, every single album. Um, there is one... Mindless Self Indulgence album that I know that I like. I haven't listened to too much MSI, but I guess I like Frankenstein Girls Are Sexy, but there are a couple of extremely problematic songs on that album, so I can't entirely endorse it. But I will say that, like, Mindless Self Indulgence is very fun <laughs> to listen to. Some of the tracks that I've heard are uh, just literally perfect name for the band. <laughs> it literally is Mindless Self Indulgence. Uh, but there are, there are definitely issues with some of their some of their music so again i can't fully say like oh you have to go listen to msi because there's there's some problems there but when i was you know 19 and cringier i thought that that maybe <laughs> that, that was pretty good but um oh yeah static x is good typo negative i haven't learned, heard much of but static x is a good band james nemo our 90s is arguably the most diverse decade of popular music avenues uh, yeah fizzinator i was about to make that point i think the 90s was a time where we really tried a lot of new stuff. You can make the argument they were doing that in the 80s too, but a lot of the new stuff they tried in the 80s wasn't <laughs> wasn't great. I mean, new age music is good to an extent, you know? Like every now and again, you get a really good good new age song, like uh, Take On Me or uh, I Ran, or some Duran Duran joint. But mostly new age music was kind of just throwing a lot of crap at the wall. I feel like in the 90s, music was a lot tighter and even though they were trying new things, they, they, they took their influences uh, from sort of less er esoteric sources, and they tried, like, less weird stuff. So I think pop music in the 90s was fantastic. You had everything from Fastball to the Spice Girls, and these are both really good acts. I actually love the Spice Girls. Um, let me put it this way. I love the production in the Spice Girls. <laughs> That's a different thing. Um, I feel like the, the Spice Girls are one of the, the most well-produced acts of the, the mid-90s. But anyway, we have just been talking about <laughs> nothing. We've been talking about music. Uh, I didn't mention Korn, and Korn is very good. Uh, Follow the Leader. Well, Blind is really good, too, but I think Follow the Leader is the best Korn album. Um, just wonderful, wonderful album. Yeah, Real Big Fish pays a lot of the way for Scott. I agree, Big Green Yeti. I think that Real Big Fish probably existed because, no doubt, and a couple of other bands existed before them, but Real Big Fish was like the ska act of the 90s, and they're fantastic. Real Big Fish is very, very good ska band. Um, Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode was good. Yeah, Depeche Mode was fine. <laughs> I hate how 90s alt has become default supermarket music. Mordobus, I wish. Like, down here in Georgia, we're still stuck on um, 80s, like, easy listening for our supermarket music. We haven't moved on. We don't have, like, a single radio station that plays 90s songs. We have completely 80s dedicated music stations, and we have, like, easy listening stations that play, like, 70s and 80s music, and then every now and again a 90s song. But we don't have, like, the 90s haven't really made it to our nostalgia sensors in Georgia yet and it bugs me because <laughs> it needs to but um I need to I need to talk about this deck <laughs> it's been 25 minutes everybody Tool uh Tentapod that is my that is Britney's favorite band Tool is Britney's favorite band of all time she knows way more about them than I do to the point that if I talked about Tool she would be like you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> I'd probably say something stupid um but I do I do like Tool an awful lot um now, when it gets to what's the best Tool album, that's when you you really start throwing down. Because I'm not I'm not sure I'm not sure about that at all. Um, I actually really like Ten Thousand Days. My wife does not like Ten Thousand Days very much because um, she's like an old school Tool fan, and that's when t t they really started getting to her mind like much more like radio friendly, poppy, and less kind of raw around 10,000 days, but she really likes even their really experimental stuff from before that, and so and Vicarious, um, all that stuff. So it, it's it's kind of tough to say. I think my favorite my favorite Tool song is Wings for Marie, part two, if you care, um, and that's on 10,000 Days, and 10,000 Days also has The Pot. It's a really good album, but it's not the best. It's not. If my wife heard me making these arguments, she'd go crazy. Um, <laughs> she, she would go nuts. <clears throat> but yeah, Anima. Anima's probably... What's her favorite song by them? Uh, Push It. 
Push It is her favorite song by them. Which is a Push It's very, very good. It's a very good song. James Nemo asked that question. Um, but anyway, I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta do it. <laughs> Some people go deep with Tool. Yeah, my, my wife does. <laughs> okay, so. We ready? Are we ready to talk about the stack? Are we, are we ready to do that? We got... Like eight people, like, what is this deck anyway? So, I know you've been looking at it for 25 minutes. <laughs> Can't figure it out. 